Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with me for message 158, 158. Lord, I just thank you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. I can look out this window. Hopefully people can see uh, from the camera. Well, the cloudy sky with that uh, peach tree and the peach, peach blossoms. Yeah, I think they, I don't know why they show up more when I put my head like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for those pretty pink peach blossoms. I just thank you for your beauty, O oh Lord God, that you make in this world. It declares your glory, all of it, Lord God. Thank you for creating us, creating your word, breathing out, creating your word, the word of God, the Bible we have. To revive our life, O oh Lord God. Help us to be people of you, of your word. Hear you in your word. In the reviving of our soul that you give through your word. Your breath. You breathe life into us, O oh Lord God. With your word. Guide and direct us, we pray. In your name, Jesus. Amen. And I always want to start out with, uh, with Jesus. <laughs> God. Let's praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10 in part. Praise God the Father, our Heavenly Father. What Thank you, for Father, for watching over us. Praise God, our Savior, Jesus. Thank you for saving us from darkness, from hell, and giving us life with you now and forever. For coming in us in the Holy Spirit. Praise God the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our helper, helper. And that you, God, have made our home, made your home in us. Uh, and that is through the Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Guide us in your truth. And the truth of your word, Jesus, that you spoke on the night before you were crucified. Thinking of bread. And I want to share the scriptures about bread, some of them. <laughs> uh, and how, God, you are the bread of life. You give us life. <laughs> Help us to see that in your word. Matthew 26, 26, Jesus' words to his disciples on the night before he was crucified. I've shared many times. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, I thank you that someday we will dine with you in your kingdom and we will drink of the fruit of the vine with you. With you, Jesus, and with our loved ones who are already there with you in your kingdom, enjoying your presence. I thank you that you give us the hope of our home in heaven. May we keep this in our mind always as we struggle in this world that uh, there is a home in heaven prepared for us. And may it comfort us when we miss our loved ones, that our loved ones are in that home already waiting for us, as you are waiting for that day when we will Join you, Jesus, in your kingdom. Thank you for the forgiveness of all of our sins and in your body being broken for the forgiveness of our sins and your blood poured out. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I mentioned before about Deuteronomy 8, <laughs> something we should read often, I believe. So here we are, Deuteronomy 8. Here we are. God talking about bread. 
Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. The whole commandment that I command you today, this is God speaking to Moses. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do that you may live and multiply. I guess it's not only to Moses, but all the people, uh, of the Hebrew people. <laughs> that you may live and and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. They hadn't yet, uh, Moses, well, Moses didn't, eh, he saw the promised land, <laughs> then he went home to heaven, <laughs> but he didn't enter it. But Joshua took the people into, uh, into the promised land, and what is the name Joshua? The equivalent of the name Joshua is the name Jesus, <laughs> and they both both mean the Lord saves. And as Jesus uh, will bring us into the promised land, <laughs> into his kingdom forever, uh, Joshua brought uh, the people of Israel into the promised land. So just foretelling <laughs> the day that we'll enter the kingdom of God into the promised land. And uh, verse 2, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And, or not. <laughs> and he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I read that again. Man does not live God is telling Moses, the people of Israel, man does not live, telling us, man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. God, let's pray. God, I just thank you that you tell us in your word, all of God's word, we need to be reading. For it's the bread of life. It revives our life. It gives us life. That's all of your word from the book of Genesis, the first book in our Bible, to the last book in our, our Bible, the book of Revelation. All of it. Man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. I'd say every word for us to live, every word, uh, every word from God for us to breathe uh, gives us life. His word gives us life. It is the breath of God. And I want to go to the uh, 17th verse of chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power in the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. <laughs> I'm amazed at how many people who, who uh, seem to have a lot of money and they uh, just think that uh, I did this and uh, I don't owe God anything and I don't need God. How stupid. <laughs> and this scripture tells, God's word tells those people, how stupid they're thinking. Beware lest you say in your heart, my power in the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. 
And if you forget the Lord your God and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so shall you perish because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. Let's pray. God, may we thank you as children of yours through our faith in Jesus, Jesus' death on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. Believing Jesus died in our place, took the wrath of God for our sins on his body and was killed and, ro and was buried and rose from the dead because that, that faith you've given us, O oh Lord God, that we have forgiveness of all of our sins and life with, with you forever. We will not perish. For as you said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, may we uh, not uh, stray from your truth, O Lord God, and uh, have to come under your discipline, which is painful, Lord. But Lord, we thank you that we can confess our sins and you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. As you have uh, posi positionally made us pure and righteous before you because of the faith you've given us in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But Lord, forgive us when we don't act out the position you've given us and we sin. And you tell us to confess it, to say what you say about it. And... Uh, that it's wrong and turn from it and turn to you to recommit our life to you as our, our Lord. For you say, as it's recorded in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And you forgive us and you help us to go on to serve you and love you. Now, this, this scripture here, God's word, it's God's word because... It's spoken by Jesus, who is called the Word in the Bible. It's spoken by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit created this Word. And I believe that's why Jesus is called the Word in 1 John 1, 1, as I've read before. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word was made flesh, and it is Jesus. And Jesus... When he was uh, starting his, just before he started his ministry on earth, uh, approximately three year ministry on earth, to train up his disciples, <laughs> to love his disciples that he, 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 he chose. Uh, before that ministry started, uh, after he was baptized by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon him and remained on him. He was a man that was uh, fully a man and he was fully God at the same time. But what did uh, Jesus uh, do? Uh, after he was baptized, he went into the, the, uh, the wilderness after the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he spoke to the devil who was tempting him <laughs> those very words from Deuteronomy chapter 8. <laughs> and you can hear it right here. Uh, I got my bookmark in the right place. I thought I had it here. Uh, I think it's Matthew 4.4. 4. Uh, I believe it's uh, Matthew 4.4. 4. All right, let's go. Let's see if I've got a memory. <laughs> Get a mind. You see that cardinal in the uh, in the tree there? I don't. <laughs> let's see. No, he's not there. Maybe he was there where I was reading. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I still do have a mind. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus... Okay, I should back up. I'll go the... I'll go to Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse 15. But Jesus answered him. He answered uh, John the Baptist, who, who said, I shouldn't baptize you, but you, you should baptize me. Uh, John the Baptist said to Jesus, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come uh, to me? Verse 15, of chapter 3 of Matthew. But Jesus answered him, John the Baptist, but Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. 
And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And right there at this event, we see God the Father speaking. We see God the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus and remaining. And we see God, the Son of God, Jesus, all at one time we see, see God in this scripture. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now chapter 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I imagine he was. <laughs> and the uh, tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written. And it was written. We have it recorded. Oh, that's all right. It didn't break. <laughs> Got excited. It's recorded in Deuteronomy 8, what Jesus quoted. <laughs> it is written. And that's God's, God's word. It's written. For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, he quoted God's word again, from Deuteronomy, this time from uh, chapter 6, I believe. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high place and showed him all the, the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Let that be a clue to us. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, we see in this scripture how the devil wants us to worship him. That means... The devil wants us to not worship you, God. And when the devil uh, steals our worship of you away from us, when the de we allow the devil's work to steal our joy in you away, way away from you, God, the devil is accomplishing his will. Oh, Lord God, may we not let the devil accomplish his will in our life, that we would never let the enemy steal our joy in the Lord away from us. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, and you are worthy of all of our worship, Lord. Amen and amen. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, <laughs> You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And that's from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Then the devil left him, and behold, Angels came and were ministering to him. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, is, thank you for giving us this great example how we should be in your word and use your word. Know it in our hearts, know it in our mind to read it that we may defeat the devil with your word. Lord God, and always worship you. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen and amen. To always be in God's word as much as we can and uh, when we can't have the Bible in front of us to have it in our head oh I was gonna read this you know always a, a positive cheery uh, oh <laughs> Psalms 107 right verses 1 and 2 oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from trouble and then we can go to Psalms 18 verses 1 through 3 
Psalms 18, 1 through 3. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock in my fortress, in my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. Saved from my enemies. Saved by the word of God. Us using the word of God to defeat our enemies. Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. I encourage us always to sing hallelujah, which means praise ye the Lord, and say, sing with a smile. If you sing better with a smile. It hasn't helped me, though, has it? No. <laughs> hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Alleluia Lord, Alleluia Lord, Alleluia Lord, oh, Alleluia Lord, Alleluia Lord, Alleluia. Lord, we praise you, oh Lord, we praise you, Lord, Lord, we praise you, Lord. Praising the Lord all day long. Thank you for being with me. God has blessed us. Lord, may we be a blessing to you. Amen.